Hey, Broken Tea Society. We're here at Trinity Forest with my good friend, Cameron McCormick. Cameron, thanks so much for making time for my us. My pleasure, my pleasure. We're gonna work on some shots today, some things that as members of the Index Experiment, uh, golfers this year, we're trying to get a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some shots that we wanted to work on that, that folks mentioned that could really help their games out. Uh, and this one could certainly help mine. Lovely. Developing the stock 100 yard shot. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of us get to 100 yards and instead of, you know, where that should be a moment where we're thinking, okay, par, perhaps birdie, mm -hmm. and we're somehow, you know, we're missing the green, we're short-siding ourselves, we're turning into fives and sixes. Right. Uh, super frustrating. Yep. Uh, so let's work on that and see what we can do there. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, as I think about hitting a 100-yard shot, I think about what makes it easy and what makes it difficult. And it helps me compartmentalize where I would go with coaching generally, and also coaching specifically. So what makes it easy is typically there's a, there's a club in the bag that if we just hit it stock, it will go 100 yards. So we're not challenged, for lack of a better term, in having to regulate the distance or the length of the swing to control the club force, meaning club head speed, to make the ball go a certain distance. I think to make that point more clear, is if I asked you to hit it 40 yards, then 50 yards, then 60 yards, then 70 yards, and then 80 yards with let's say your most lofted club, 58 or 56, whatever it may be. In order to do that well, you not only have to manage contact really well, but you have to manage different swing lengths to affect different club head speeds to give the ball that different ball speed to make it go a different distance. 100 yards therefore becomes an easier task. So then on the flip side of that, what is it that makes it far more difficult to hit it 100 yards with regularity? There's two things that come to mind. The quality of contact a person makes and that coupled skill of what we'll call dynamic loft. And to clarify what dynamic loft means, it is you've got 54 degree wedge in your hand right now. That's your stock 100 yard club, if you will. But you're not gonna present 54 degrees of loft at impact. In fact, you're gonna present some 10 to 12 degrees less, hopefully. The challenge is that if we're not making solid contact, or maybe we are, and we have too much dynamic lofted impact, then for the amount of club head speed a person generates, they end up launching the ball way up in the air. And similar to, let's say, a hose, okay? There's an optimal launch angle to launch the water out to maximize distance. If I then turn the hose on and launch it all the way up in the air, vertical to the ground, perpendicular to the ground, all it, what it does is go up and down. Right. So we have to understand that launch angle and contact for your 100 yard stock club are the most two most important factors to uh, manage and develop, probably said mm -hmm. in reverse, develop and then manage over time. So with that being said, what I look to do is I look to provide golfers feedback. First to contact. That said simply, that's where is my divot location, assuming there is a divot relative to the back edge of the ball. So here's what I'd like to create for us. Okay. I'd like to create a little laneway. So we've got a tee on one side. All right. We have club head giving ourselves about a finger margin on the toe side. And then we have a tee on the other side giving ourselves another finger margin. That gives us a little wiggle room. If we deliver the club a little closer to us, we're gonna strike it middle toe. If we deliver the club a little further away from us, yep. we're gonna strike it middle heel. At no point in time will the strike across the face vary too much either way, that then would be a factor that's gonna cause that ball to either go offline, short, or long. Okay. Now, what these two tees represent also is where the start of the divot should be, right? Back edge of golf ball, mm -hmm. adjacent, to the back edge of the tees. So what we have to get really good at is we have to get really good at landing the club in the channel that it needs to be landed in. Now, we have two alignment rods also creating a nice visual for not only the direction the swing needs to travel to be accurate to our target line, but also becomes a little bit broader lane way that that club needs to come down and land in. So what we do, again, to get right to the instruction piece, is we try and get really good at landing the club in the channel where the divot starts adjacent to those tees. Let's okay. test how good you are. And cool. I can give you a demonstration if you want. Yeah. Choose your own adventure. Demonstration from Cameron McCormick? Or Demonst Tom? <laughs> Demonstration from Cameron McCormick. Here we go. Absolutely, that channel looks quite narrow, Okay. 
So we have our sticks forming the channel, we have the tees tightening up that channel a little bit, and then we have the tees indicating where I want the club to land. Just like that, I begin with slow rehearsals, striking down, then full swing, just like so. And then I put a golf ball in, package of ball adjacent to those tees, and struck well, just like so. I should have a 100 yard shot. Now I've got a flag out there that's about 95. It looked like it traveled about five to seven past it. And I think that, in fact, I know that there's a margin of acceptability in terms of distance. In fact, TrackMan says it went 98.8. And that acceptability for, we'll, say, we'll call it handicaps under 10, ought to be four to five yards. Most pins are gonna be cut more than four on or less than four from the back edge. And so within that four to, four to five yard range, short long, I think we're gonna find our shots are far more satisfactory. They're gonna be on the green putting for that birdie or putting for that par as you uh, prefaced in the intro there. Now. That was very impressive, Cameron, <laughs> because that wasn't even your golf club. That was my golf club. Oh, we just easy. stepped up. It's a Vokey. It's a Vokey. They're plug and play. You got that right. Yeah. So what I'd like to begin with here is I'd like to begin with some landing point yeah, control. Yeah, no golf balls. In the laneway, no golf ball. Okay. So demonstrate some short swings. All right. As soon as we're both satisfied that you're striking in the laneway, where your club's first touching the ground adjacent to those tees. Laneway. In the laneway, adjacent to those tees. So there's problem number one. Yep. That would indicate heel contact, yes. So bring that hand path back closer to you. Okay. Right, the closer the handle swings to the top of your legs, the more the club head is likely to land closer to you versus further away. Yes, Tom? All right, Sweet. yes. Great job. All right. Okay, full swing for that 100 yard shot. Great job. Okay, live fire. Live fire. Now we're not gonna worry about those T locations or if we need to, we can just kind of pop this one out, put it back there because it's gonna be feedback to where our divot started. Yep. After the shot. Nice job. On target, beautifully. Little short. Little short, stand by. Okay, so we got an 83 yard carry there. The first question that comes to mind if this was a, like a really live, I'm working with a client is, are we certain that your 54 is a 100 yard club? Um, see, that's the thing. And I think you, you mentioned this earlier. I feel like I'm delivering different loft mm -hmm. with my wedges uh, on, a, you know, on this shot that, yeah, I could hit this 105, I could hit it 85. Yeah, sure. Um, because my loft is sort of, when I'm variable, hitting fuller right? wedges is very, very yeah. Yeah. variable. Indeed, indeed. And so what I have is evidence, and that's where TrackMan comes in, whether it's TrackMan or GC Quad or FlightScope or any other launch monitor. Feedback is important to know that what you think to be the problem is actually the problem, and therefore once you target it, you've solved that problem, right? Mm -hmm. And that launch angle that you just created was 33 degrees, and that's a little high for my liking. Mm. That's one of those launch angles that says, yes, the hose is a little bit pointed to the sky, and I'm not gonna get the distance I could possibly get. Right. One of the other factors is how much club head speed you created. So I've got two points of reference. I've got how much club head speed you created, which is not quite enough to hit it 100 yards, mm -hmm. and I've got not quite enough ball speed. So knowing that you landed the club beautifully in the laneway, you landed the club adjacent to the tee that's on the ground, that doesn't appear to be a problem that you need hard work on, or at least some work on. But what does appear is you need some work on the loft you're delivering, which, what you, with, which is what you just verbalized. So let's go, go to drill number two to enhance your ability to hit your stock 100, 100 yard shot. I'm gonna switch positions with you again. Okay. So, teacher. So for this, we're gonna use a secondary T and that secondary T will pop our laneway in again and our landing point start. And then we're gonna use our yellow T that's not yet broken, but my hope is to break it just ahead of where the front of the golf ball is and leaning relatively flat or parallel to the ground. We move this tee out of the way. So what do we know about too much lofted impact? Too much dynamic lofted impact would look like the club head's moving underneath the handle. Mm -hmm. And therefore the movement of the club head relative to the ground is much more upward. It's arcing upward. We're gonna have a really difficult time driving that tee into the ground if we come in scooping with too much dynamic loft. So the objective is to treat this yellow tee as a nail and to treat your club head like it's the hammer. 
the impression I want to give you here is there's an amount of lead to the handle that would then present the loft of the club more perpendicular like the head of the hammer would be to the nail. And so if I just demonstrate out of the way, because I'm going to get you to do this one, I'm going to set up another station with only this primary impact tee or dynamic loft tee. I'm going to show you what it might look and feel like if I've done it a lot. So I was really driving the handle, low dynamic loft, therefore I presented a lot of leading edge and there's some drive yep. to the turf. Yep. And it's okay for a player to experience or try for too much. We need to try for too much dynamic loft effect to counter the normal behavior, which is too little. So, mm -hmm. your turn. Okay. I'm going to rehearse it once or twice with you to start to kind of plant the seed of that, what that feeling is. So, address the yellow tea. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, yellow tea. Yeah. So. I'm going to guide the swing. So, you're riding shotgun. I'm going to be controlling it. Relax for me. Mm -hmm. There's low dynamic loft. Okay. That's, Whoa. that's a sense that you're going to drive that T downward into the ground, right? Yeah. And now you're driving on your own here. Go ahead okay. and drive that T down into the ground. Fantastic. <clears throat> now, despite the fact that you didn't drive the T into the ground, you didn't make a substantial divot, I think you probably had a different feeling Very in the different experience, feeling. right? Yeah, totally. Can you describe feeling. to the camera what the feeling was? Well, it definitely feels like my hands are ahead of the club face Perfect. as ding, I'm ding. coming through. And I'm not, you know, it's not that scoop, scoop and hope. Good. Awesome. You know? <laughs> Live fire. Outstanding. You can see that ball coming out lower launch trajectory, oh, yeah. right? And so if I'm correct, what should we see on TrackMan? We see longer distance from lower launch angle. So your launch angle went from 33 to 30 because of that delivered dynamic loft. Your club head speed was the same, but yet you achieved close to two miles, a little bit more than two miles an hour of increase in ball speed because of that dynamic loft, mm -hmm. and therefore it went 90 yards. Takes me back to that first question, are we sure that this is your 100-yard club? I'm not certain just yet mm -hmm. because that's the proper launch angle mm -hmm. for this club. So now we'd start to talk about what things we could do to increase the club head speed, yeah. right? Club head speed increase achieves a ball speed increase. Net, net for most players, it's we need to find out what that 100 yard club is. We need to find out whether there's deficiencies or inefficiencies in the way they're moving the club back to impact from a in out, meaning laneway, from a landing point and a dynamic loft. So there's two drills that we just explored here and, and discovered or learned that help refine contact help refine dynamic loft. And then after that, it's just a matter of then kind of reverse discovering, is it the appropriate club for right. them? Absolutely. Questions uh, or comments? Well, do you think it would be, if I tried going to like a 50? Yeah, and certainly. Then, mm -hmm. And just see what the numbers look like? I think that would be the next point of discovery, wouldn't it? Yeah, yep. wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's see, now that I feel like I'm coming at the ball with a better attack angle, same sense of delivering lower dynamic loft here. Yeah. It's the same sense through the bag, in fact. Yeah, lovely job. So when I look at this one, immediately TrackMan tells me at 83 miles an hour, it should go 100 yards. 101 yards. On the nose. Yeah. Boom. So I know what ball speed to look for. I know what club head speed to look for. I know what launch angle to look for. Those That's three funny. data points, 30, degrees of launch, 83, 82 to 83 miles per hour of ball speed, and it typically comes from about 75, 76 miles an hour of club head speed. So it, I think we've been certain we go. that your 50 is your 100 yard club. I always suspected it was, Cameron. Nice, good job. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you.